What led then to the creation of Kiva? Sure. Talk to us about that. Well, so that passion, as I said, it was, it was pretty vague and amorphous for a long time. I didn't know what my specific role should be. Um, in college, I studied philosophy and poetry and wonderful things, but it didn't necessarily give me a clear path as to how I could contribute to alleviate poverty. But a few years out of school, five years ago, actually, from now, I learned about microfinance. And just to define terms, in case mm-hmm. anyone listening or watching yeah. in the future, uh, has not heard this word. Basically, think of microfinance as financial services for the poor, right? So I I learned about this, and I learned about the power of a small loan to change someone's life, and I thought, that's my thing. That's what I should do. So I I quit my job, and a few months later, I was in East Africa for a three-month project interviewing entrepreneurs that had received just $100 to start a business. And I was blown away by their stories of success. And And these are situations where your normal banks will not lend money. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So a lot of microfinance institutions that exist out there, these banks for the poor, exist to serve the unbanked, exist to serve people in that, that are so poor that they have no collateral to take mm-hmm. to a bank to get a loan. They live in a very remote rural area. They live in the middle of a slum and are, they, can't, they can't access the same types of um, resources through institutions that serve others in the community around them, but not them. So. I remember when we were in Guatemala and we mm. heard the story of uh, one of these entrepreneurs was actually a woman that was in jail. And I thought, I guess they must have some little enterprises going in, in, in jail. And she was the recipient. A bank would never even come close to Yeah, a lot of these, my, I might slip into acronyms, these MFIs, these microfinance institutions. And there are thousands of them out there. And a lot of them, especially the ones that Kiva works with, are mission-driven. They're ones that are out there to alleviate poverty and to, they, they put an emphasis on training, they put an emphasis on really empowering the individual they're serving, not just providing a small loan or a small mm-hmm. other product that suits the needs of someone with a lower income. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so my eyes are being opened. This is uh, four years ago now. My eyes are being opened to the power of this small infusion of capital in the life of somebody living in poverty. And I became sort of obsessed with these stories. Um, every one of them was unique. Even if I would interview in my work in East Africa, um, you know, 20 goat herders in a row, every story was special and unique, and there were details of life change that needed to be told. So I started to tell my friends and family these stories, and this dialogue began between myself and Matt Flannery, my co-founder, and our friends and family, and we started to say, how can we participate in the next chapter of these stories of success? The natural step was alone for a lot of these entrepreneurs, so we thought, it's funny, I mean, kind of naively, we thought, well, why don't we provide that funding? Won't that be fun? Won't it be interesting? These stories are, in and of themselves, just, it's a privilege to get to hear them and to know the people that are living them out. So. The idea was, how can we lend to a, a, a small loan to an individual living in Kenya, Uganda, t- or Tanzania? That was the very beginning idea. You remember one of those, uh, kind of an example of one of those uh, early loans that you Oh, sure, gave? sure. So there were, um, one of the businesses that we encountered in the very beginning that we thought, this is just so obvious, um, there was a group of entrepreneurs, each of whom were farmers that there were rice farmers in uh, northern Uganda, and they needed uh, a truck <laughs> to basically collect the rice and not just sell it among their neighbors in the village, but also to other marketplaces, to trading centers and to towns nearby, but they needed transportation. Mm-hmm. I think that they had found a vehicle that was gonna be $2,000, and they needed this funding to buy the truck and then be able to sell what they were farming in other markets. Um, we thought, wouldn't it be really interesting to provide that loan funding to them and see see this unfold. So that was one of the first that sort of gave us the idea. 